Let's turn milk into wine. Now this recipe is actually from the book I just released and I think it's pretty fun. So let's just get started. So here's the thing about wine. Wine is a form of alcohol and everything alcoholic at some point was a sugary liquid. For example, meat has honey in it and beer has like this malted barley, which is very sweet. So the question is, if I'm gonna turn milk into wine, where is that sugar coming from? Let's find out. If you look at the nutrition label of milk, you can see there's about 12 grams of sugar in a glass of milk, which means that sugar makes up about 5% of milk. Well, what is this sugar and how can I ferment that into alcohol? And today, that's what I'm gonna address. Now I'm gonna start maybe unsurprisingly with some milk. I have a gallon or about four liters of whole milk that I'm gonna pour into a pot and I'm gonna heat this up. Now the reason I'm doing that is because I actually wanna curdle this milk and I'll explain why in a second. But to help with this process, I'm gonna add something called rennet, which is used in cheese making and it's gonna help curdle the milk. I'm gonna give this a big old swirl to mix everything up and I'm gonna keep a close eye on this milk because if there's one thing in this world that milk likes to do when it gets heated is to puff up and spill all over your burner and cause a giant mess. Now after a few minutes, the milk was starting to look like this. So what the heck is going on here? Well, milk for the most part is just a bunch of little fat globs suspended in a liquidy suspension. Now, as you know, fat does not get along with water. But in milk, there's these proteins that help form a protective layer around the fat, and more or less hide the fat blobs from the water so that it can just kind of chill inside of it. Well, that rennet I added earlier breaks down the milk protein and cause that protective layer to burst apart. So then all of the fat kind of gets exposed and floats to the top. And then we're left over with this yellowish liquid. Very yummy looking, I would say. Now, now those fat blobs we see floating on the top are known as curds. And this is actually what cheese is made out of. Now, as much as I love cheese, what we really want is that yellow liquid that's left over, which is known as whey. So what I need to do next is separate the curds from the whey. So to do that, I'm gonna use a cheesecloth inside of a sieve and just pour my coagulated mess through it. Now, one tip is that if you decide to do this, make sure you have another big enough pot so you don't have to use two small bowls like I did. So after everything was separated, I've got some delicious curds. I added some salt to this and just gave it a really good mix. And that's gonna be some really delicious cheese I can put on some toast later. Now, as I said earlier, although the cheese is a nice byproduct, what we're really after is that yellow liquid. And I think that we are way overdue on me talking about what the heck is in this liquid. Well, it actually goes back to the beginning of the video turn milk into wine, I need access to the sugar in the milk. Well, as it turns out, this whey is full of sugar. In milk, the sugar has the form of lactose, which is actually pretty complicated. Yeast can't process lactose directly. So to give the yeast a fighting chance, we're gonna need to turn this lactose into something a little bit simpler that the yeast can actually process. And so to do that, I'm gonna add lactase enzyme directly to this which will break those simple sugars up into sugars that the yeast can actually process. Now, the cool thing is that these lactase tablets are actually pretty easy to find because this is what you end up taking if you're lactose intolerant to be able to drink milk. Cool. Well, we got a problem. With the natural sugar concentration of milk as it stands, if we were to ferment this into alcohol, we'll only end up with something that has about 1.4% ABV, which isn't very wine-like. So we got two options here. One thing I can do is I can try to concentrate this whey by 10 times, giving me a super sugary liquid. The problem is that's gonna reduce the amount of milk that I have down to about one and a half cups, which isn't very much. The other option is I could add a crap ton of sugar, which is what I chose to do. I added the sugar into the still warm whey and gave it a solid mix. Now, one thing to note is I said warm, but definitely not hot, which brings me to why this is the third time I've made this video and not the second. The last time I tried to make this was about a year before I made this one. And I went through the whole process. I curdled the milk, separated out the whey, and this time I actually decided to concentrate the whey down to get a more sugary liquid, which took several hours and honestly was pretty extremely labor intensive. But from the fruits of my labor, I had a super sugary liquid that I could turn into alcohol. Once I got the sugar concentration down to something where it would have given me about 7% alcohol, it had been hours and hours worth of work. And I was very excited to actually ferment this but I made an extremely dumb mistake. I added the still boiling whey into a glass container that wasn't shockproof. Fans of Nile Red will know what's gonna happen next. Yeah, that was an extremely sad moment. And my apartment floor smelled like whey for a month and I actually kind of burned myself doing this. So I think moral of the story is don't be dumb like I am. And when dealing with hot liquids and glass, be careful. So once the sugar was completely dissolved, I decided to add the warm, not boiling hot, whey into a sanitized fermenter. I let it cool down further and then added some wine yeast, sealed it up and let the yeast do its thing for two weeks. Two weeks later, I came back and poured myself a glass of this milk wine and I gave it a taste. And honestly, I gotta say, it isn't too bad. 
But let's do a proper taste test. Okay, so I have here my milk wine and I just, I'm gonna do a little bit of a taste test. I actually filmed most of this video about six months ago and so it's been aging for about six months more. So hopefully this doesn't poison me um, since the last time I tasted this. But cheers. Honestly, it's pretty good. It actually kind of tastes a little bit like mead and because of the lactose, um, when it gets broken down, some of it's not still fermentable by the yeast. So it has actually a little bit of sweetness to it. Honestly, it's not that bad. And uh, I might actually recommend making this, especially if you're gonna buy one of my books. But even if you don't, I do maybe recommend checking out how to make uh, blonde or this uh, milk wine recipe. Now, if you do decide to make this, uh, I can actually imagine that after you've made it, if you actually refrigerate this, it might even taste a little bit better. And it kind of feels like it should be a Christmas time drink. Well, that's it for this week. Thank you for watching and all right, bye.